Okay, hi everyone. Uh, welcome back to our week three tutorial. Um, today we'll be learning about uh, basically functions, uh, loops, and um, if else statements lah. I think um, I think most of you have. I believe by Friday you guys should have um, seen your tutorial worksheet. So I do hope that you guys have work on the tutorial worksheet. If you don't, it's okay. We'll have time to work on it today together. Meanwhile, uh, we'll be working from this uh, Python notebook for those of you. Um, so I think I explained it before. So a Python notebook is just like a, a normal Python, but then basically you can actually, you know, put your codes in chunks and then like give comments and everything. So I've sent the link in the group. You just need to open it. And then after opening it, you just make sure you press connect on the top right corner. Now it takes some time, around 30 seconds to one minute to connect. After it is connected over here, then you can simply just run the code. I think uh, just uh, run the first one. Basically, it's just press run anyway. This one is just to install group, uh, Turtle in the notebook. But then the Turtle is slightly different because it's for Google Cola. And then basically, you can start running things. Uh. For example, in this case, you can run this function and it will be stored that way. Um, all right, let's, let's just start. Okay, functions. Uh, now, I think most of you are already familiar with functions already. So it, this is the way you write a function, right? There's the keyword in front, which is defined, basically a defining function. Also the name, and then the input argument which the input, there may be an input, there may not be an input, up to you. And then there's indentation, which is very important, that indicates that anything that's indented under the function name is basically belongs under that function. And then a return statement, which is the output. Now, um, I know some of you are, when you write functions, right, you always have the return statement. I think I just want to clarify that a return statement is not compulsory. If your function does not have a return statement, it will simply return a none object. Okay, so so say we want to draw this uh, triangle, right? Um, I'm, say you want to draw this triangle. I think uh, it's pretty easy to draw this since last in assignment one, you guys all managed to draw a square. So to draw this triangle, you would definitely want to create a uh, Forward, left, rotate, forward, left, rotate, forward, left, rotate, yada, 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 right? But if I want to draw it again, right, it's it's, it's just stupid life. I need to copy paste all these six codes over and over again. That's why we saw it in a function like this. So uh, putting things in function is like preparing a template for a future code. So if you want to like... Uh, create a new code, right? And it's similar to the code that you have done in the past. You don't have to redo everything. You can just call this function and use this as your template. Now, as a template, this is not really flexible, right? So, yeah, you can use it as a template like this. So just call the function and it will run everything. But then it's very not flexible. If you can notice, right? Uh, the length of the triangle is quite restricted. You can only like do like 300. But if I want to do other lengths, like should I write a new function for 200? Or should I write another function? And so it's very unflexible. And now if you know where I'm going, basically what you want to do is to capture common pattern and make it the input of the function like this. Okay. So I want to make it flexible and in this way, right, then I can draw multiple triangles with different lengths and everything. So answering your first tutorial, uh, yeah, answering your first tutorial question, you can do this. Uh, you can, uh, this is your first tutorial question, but uh, to do this, you simply create multiple triangles with different lengths. For demo, you can actually go to the notebook. And yeah, there is this code, uh, the same exact code. 
that basically draws a triangle that way. We can use a for loop, right? Sure, you can use a for loop. I mean, I think when you already start drawing like 10, 10 triangles, right? That's where you kind of need a for loop. Say I have a four, I'll start with zero, I'll start with 50. Five fifty. Mm, I think this needs a for loop. I think this one will draw like 10 triangles for you. All right, it's gonna be pretty long if you're just gonna copy paste, copy paste. So yes, you may use a for loop. Okay. All right, it's gonna take forever. Meanwhile, we'll move on. How about this triangle? Um, I think if this triangle, right, we can see that um, it's basically three triangles. What we can do is basically um, create, uh, create the first triangle over here. So I'm gonna, just going to like uh, draw, try, like say uh, 100. And then uh, basically from... I'll try that first. See, uh, my 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 pen is directing this way. What I want to do is either I rotate the pen to this direction and create it from this way, or I want to point it downwards to this triangle. So anyway, it can. So perhaps I would do like a, a left rotate 120 degrees. Then draw another triangle. Perhaps we'll see what it does. It goes down, it does another rotation. Oh, it now draws, draws the next triangle. So I think I'll do another rotate to draw the last triangle. All right, cool. If you are a bit like uh, partic particular with the angle of the pen, just do another rotation one and it's gonna be perfect. So there you have it, uh, your answer for the second question. Now, um, it won't be fun if I answer all your questions. And for those of you who actually opened the notebook, right? Um, yeah, we uh, the prof have prepared some challenges for you. And the first one and the second one. So, uh, the prof will give you, uh, here, I think, where is it? The prof has given you 10 minutes to do it. So, I'll give you 10 minutes from 12.10 to 12.20 to work on this pattern. Uh, I know some of you are on your phones, I think. Some of you are joining this uh, tutorial from your phones instead of your laptops and cannot work on it. So it's okay, but for those of you who are on your laptops, uh, you can work on this. Now, uh, okay. Now once you're done, right, uh, once you're done coding these uh, patterns, uh, please uh, copy it to this code share link so that, you know, everyone can see. Lah. Uh, Please just share your answers there. Mm. Okay, okay, happy coding everyone. All right, uh, it's 30 minutes already. Like, does anyone want to give it a shot? Like, I only see two answers here. Or oh, is it just my computer that's a bit slow? Okay, uh, please share to copy. Copy your answers. Is uh, come on, guys. Like this one, this class is actually has the. I think you guys have like, yeah, you guys are the least that copy the answer. Okay, uh, anyone? Uh, 
All right, uh, you guys are basically bashing each other. All right, uh, I would like to thank Stad and Adele for copying their answers. Uh, we'll just go through them now. Let's copy Tad's code. Um, let's see if it works. Good. Okay. All right, this is Tad's code. All right, I think it, it looks like it's working. All right, it's working basically. So if you can see that code, right? Like basically he draws one by one. This for loop, this inside for loop is basically the one that draws the uh, triangles. And then this for loop is basically for to draw each other, each triangle. Lah. Okay. I think, um, good job. I think on, only the days submitted for first triangle. So I think uh, one tip that I can give you is that uh, instead of using this for loop inside, right? Why don't you immediately use the draw triangle feature? Yeah, you can actually immediately like uh, draw try. I hope it's correct. Draw try V. Let's give it a shot. I hope it works out. But generally what you want to do is just like use functions that you have built on before so that you can, you know, like you can keep your code simpler and it's very important to be able to reuse functions again. So whenever you see the opportunity to reuse other functions, please reuse it instead. Okay. I hope uh, that, okay, thanks for the thumbs up. Thank you so much. At least I'm not talking to a wall. <laughs> All right, next, next up. Uh, we have the second triangle. Uh, we have from, okay, I, I, I mean, same lah, same lah, your code. Basically, you can replace it with draw triangle. In fact, in fact, we'll, I'll try to see from Adele's code lah, this time. Let's see if it works. Second try. A, 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 C. What's the A here, Adele? All right, it's okay, it's okay. Adele, what's the A here in this case? What's the input? Is it the length? All right. Let's give it 100. Oh, it's a bit. All right, my bad. Uh, Hmm. All right. Um. Okay. I, okay. Okay. I need to mention again, right? Um, ladies and gentlemen, for this course, when you import packages, right? Please import it this way: from package name, import star. Please don't import it this way. Please, okay? For this course only, for this course only. So please don't import it this way, okay? Please import the, the upper part way. And then after that, uh, because I imported that way, I'll, I'll remove the word turtle here, lah. okay? But thank God, because you use you actually use another function, right? See, like I don't really have to make much modification. If you if you don't reuse functions, right? I'll need to do a lot of modification. Hmm. Okay, I'm not so sure what happened here. Yeah, I think there should be a problem here. But I think looking from your code, it should be okay lah, yeah. Mm. Yeah lah, I think like there's something tricky here. It's okay, it's okay. I mean, yeah. This one is good. Let me, let, let's try one more time. 
feedback sa amin. Okay, unit should be integer. I'm not so sure where it, the problem is. I think this is the problem, but I'm not so sure why. That's the problem. I think it's because of this. Uh, that's, that's, I mean, if it's asking for an integer, then sure. Okay. All right, it's working now. All right, that's a beautiful design, although the rotation is a bit off, but that's okay. That's perfectly fine. All right, if you can see Adele's code here, I think you can understand. All right, what's going to what's happening is she's really the, she considered like this as one part one part over here. I think one uh, another way that I want to show is uh, this way. Let me copy this first. I think another way that I want to show is that um, remember this design over here, right? This design over here. I'll take that. I'll take that design. All right, but I'll change the length. Right, and then, oh my bad. Then basically create a for loop. Then basically uh, I wanna draw full line. Then, Left rotate, 60 degrees. So if you can see here, right, what's, uh, what I do is that I draw the small, uh, like three triangles first, and then I draw the second layer. But before I draw the second layer, I rotate it a bit to the, to the left or to the right. And then finally I do one final rotation and draw the big one, All right? That's another way as well. Okay, because if you see this picture over here, right? Actually, if you notice, while loop, um, wait, I'll touch that after this. If you can see, right, this one over here, right, is actually basically the same triangle. But then I only, sh I, I shifted by 60 degrees lah, here, okay? That's why. Actually, this one, right, this one, or the first one as well, instead of you drawing this, each triangle one by one, you can also do it the same way as I did, where you actually draw this part first, the, sec the first layer, the second layer, and then the third layer. That's also another possibility. Now, how we ask about, can we use while loop? I mean, technically, anything that you use a for loop, right, you can convert it into a while loop regardless. But, 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 I personally do not like while loops. While loops are not clean. It's a bit hard to read in this case. And yeah, sometimes it can, it performs slower and it's not, it, if you don't pro do it properly, right, you can actually uh, run into maximum, uh, you know, infinite loop. So to be honest, right, if, if, if possible, try to avoid while loops. Lah. Try to avoid while loops unless necessary. I think we'll touch on this later on when you should use a for loop and when you should use a while loop. Okay. Anyways, thanks for drawing these. Um, oops, my bad. Uh, just a little note, code shares. Uh, for those of you who are sharing code, right? Thanks for those who are sharing code. Just a little code. Thanks, Nick. Um, the while loop here, the code share code here is only valid for 24 hours. So if any one of you want to save the code, just make sure you copy it before you leave. Up. Next, we'll do a little detour to do exp to explain like the difference between print and return. Okay. So 
So yeah, uh, if you can see like uh, the previous drawing examples do not have any return values, right? So um, yeah. So this is the Python shell console that you actually see in our first tutorial last week, where some code that have a return value, for example, five plus three, but some does not have any echo. For example, x equals to five plus three because an assignment operator usually does not echo anything, right? So a function may or may not have a return value. For example, the first one does not have, uh, have a return value which returns the square of, a, of the x and the second one is, does not have any return value. It technically does, but it returns a value of none, lah, if you can see here. So, so if you run it in Python echo, uh, Python shell, right, you won't be able to say the difference. Just like you can see here, right, the square will just like give nine and say three times will print hello three times. I think what you need to be able to distinguish here is the difference. Where the nine here is the echo of the written value and the say three times is the print is the result of the print function. So what happens if you actually print the results of the function is that in here, it, the first one, it will simply print the return statement, which is nine. And second, it will still do the code, which is hello, 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 and then print none because it's basically the return value. Lah. So if you want more demonstration, you can actually head to the group Python notebook and see how it's uh, run in action. Lah. See this one echoes uh, the return value. Here it does not echo anything because the return value is assigned to value Y. Hence when you print Y, you can actually see it. This one, the print statement will still print alamat three times as a part of running the function. So when you try to run say three times by assigning Z, it will still print it despite it being assigned to Z. And when you actually print Z, it actually returns none. How to distinguish echo from the late letter? Uh, um, I think I think the key the lesson here is not trying to distinguish the output. But rather, like when you are trying to code, right, you need to be able to differentiate when to use a print statement, when to use a return statement. For your assignments, except check H, for your assignments, all your assignments except check H, right, you are expected to actually do use a return statement unless stated otherwise. So in your assignment document, if there's a answer like uh, return this, please do return. Okay. If it asks you to print, then print. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, next up is selection statement. Now for selection statement, we'll just use, uh, I know that the code uh, can be seen here and you can run it, but then that's for your own self-learning. For now, we'll just use poll everywhere lah, to, you know, like get your brain juice working. Lah. Perhaps you guys, yeah. So yeah, um, we'll just learn this with pull everywhere as well. I mean, if you can do it, if you can do well, means uh, you're okay. If you do poorly, uh, then you can learn from your mistakes. Yeah, I'll send the link. Please join everyone. I'm already very uh, kind by not asking you guys to turn on your camera. We are, let me type it out. So if you guys have joined, uh, just like give me a thumbs up in the Zoom chat. And no, uh, being stupid is not a reason for you to not join this uh, activity. All right, I think I have enough people. So yeah, ready or not, we'll just start. You guys can just join us. Uh, there are four questions, uh, so not, not that hard, okay? 
So yeah, what will this statement print? Uh, we have 30 seconds on the clock. So we have an if else statement. What will this print? All right, uh, time's up. So let's see the the correct answer. We'll see if uh, some of you are still confused. And sixty percent percent of you got it right by answering two, and the rest of you are uh, just there's eleven percent of you pick one, six percent answered actually answered error, and seventy percent answered none. Okay, let's go back and see what's going on here. All right. So if true, so if we can see right, this is one if else block on its own. And then basically this is another if else block on its own. And we can see that if um, this particular part over here, this particular part over here, right, basically will encompasses everything that's under it. Okay. So with that, we need to evaluate the first part. The first part. Now, what's this? And apparently, the value of this is true because it's true. It will run everything here. Then, because uh, this is another if else statement, then we'll run it one by one. Lah. First, we evaluate the first one, which is false. Hence, because it's false, it will be skipped. Hence, it will print this statement over here, which results in two. So, for those of you who answered the other uh, other answers, I'm not so sure whether you're just joking or having fun, but yeah, the answer is too long. All right, next part, next question. Uh, oh, before the next question, the leaderboard. All right, at least, uh, all right, there's a thirsty cannery, okay. All right, that's okay. Uh, wait, uh, uh, Mutu is asking, why is true? What do you mean why it's true? Never mind. Lah. I think we'll just, uh, I'll just show the next one. Lah. So the next if else statement is this one. Uh, you have 30 seconds on the clock. So here we have like that foo, if false, if true, return one, else return two. Try to trace it from the top. Five seconds. All right, let's see what's the correct answer. The correct answer is two. Congratulations, everyone got it right. Right. I think this one, since everyone got it right, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. This is one chunk. This is another chunk. If this is true, I'll run the entire code here. If it's not, I'll skip to else runs here. But the thing is, it's not true. This one evaluates as false, hence this part is uh, this part is skipped. And then because there's an else statement, basically I'll just run whatever here, which gives me two. All right, well done, easy. Next, uh, all right, the leaderboard, there's no changes since everyone got it right. Next is better, 30 seconds on the clock, give it a shot. Okay, so we have five statements here. The first one, second one, third one, fourth one, and the fifth one. All right, time's up. We'll see the results. And the results is, oh, there's quite a mix of answers. There's one, there's two, there's three, there's five, there's actually error. It's okay. So we'll discuss. Um, you can see that uh, we, we can actually evaluate the statements here. This one is true. Yeah, sorry. 
This one is false. This one is false. True. True. And then this is else, meaning that whatever happens, it will go here. So definitely we can immediately cross out the false statements here. We can cross this one out, we can cross this one out. Now we have three statements left. The question is which one should we pick? Basically, the uh, for if an if else statement, right, you pick the first statements that's true. So if there's no statements that's true, then you pick else. So in this case, we have a true statements here. So we'll cross out else. Now between these true statement, two true statements, we'll pick whichever is true first. So in this case, we pick this one. And because we picked that one, the uh, this one will not be counted anymore. Hence, it will return three. Right? Okay. Why can we directly cross out the false statements? Uh, because it's because it's false. Because it's false, um, nothing will be run there. Lah. I mean, that's the premise of an if-else statement. If it's false, then don't run it. Lah. If it's not true, why? If it's not true, then don't do it. It's like it's like that statement. Lah, like, if there's if um, and if, yeah, it's just like that statement. I think I can find the meme. Never mind lah, but uh, yeah, it's just like if it's true, then you do it. If it's not true, then don't do it lah. That's why we can cross the statements here out immediately. Okay. All right. Uh, I think the final question should be easy. All right. Uh, okay. Final question should be very easy. Okay, this one is written ah, uh, written. Also, guys, if you want to ask questions, just uh, I, I just ask in general, okay, so, uh, so everyone can see. Because it will be quite weird if I answer your question and the others don't know what the question is. For three seconds. All right, time's up. And all right, a good job. 70% of you answered none. So yeah, um, in this case, if we see, right, um, we'll break it down first. So this is one if else statement. And this is another one. This is an if state if else statement that does not have an else statement. And basically, this statement will this conditional will run everything below it. But in this case, right, if we evaluate it, this is this evaluates as false. Because it evaluates as false, right? Everything under it will not be run. Okay? Because nothing happens, basically, this nothing happened, right? Basically, it will return, give you a none. Because nothing happened. Is it clear? All right. Uh, if it's clear, can you give me a thumbs up? Because that's the last question. So if it's false, no matter what you put under it, it will be ignored. Yes, it will be ignored. So if you see, right, if you see here, there's a true statement here. Right. But because this one is false, right, and this one is under this, then this none of this will be run. All right, I think it's pretty clear. So I think uh, with that, uh, let's ask, answer your actual tutorial question. Anyways, good job for everyone that on that is on the leaderboard. Well done. Now, answering the real question here. This is from your tutorial question. So if you cannot see, just if you cannot see the. This is true. This is from your tutorial question over here, right? So what, what is the difference between those two? Indentation, one returns two, the other returns none. Indentation, keep it coming guys, keep it coming. Any other answers? Hey, what? Okay, cool. Foo is not equal to bus, the second is none. All right, I mean, indentation. You, you, you got it, I guess. So this one is here. Oops. What happened? All 
Rồi. Alright, thanks. This one is true. This one is false. Then we'll skip. Then we'll print two. This one is true, but then this one is false. Then it's skip. And because this is is already true, this one will be skip as well. So yeah, uh, good job everyone. And oh, I feel bad for you. Well, we can talk about this at the end of the tutorial. Don't worry. Oh, this one I cannot help you. Sorry, I'm not your, I'm not your boyfriend or girlfriend. If you're struggling with life, sorry. Cannot do anything about it. All right, thanks guys. Now moving on. So, uh, all right, moving on to this part. But uh, okay, I'll let me just give me a give you a brief intro first uh, for that part. So, so. All right, wait, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Go back a bit. Backtrack, backtrack. Uh, Uh, so the first one, first is two and second and none because it's false and prints two and since no output is nothing, so none. Yeah, yeah, basically it's none. Correct. Okay. Yeah, I'll just touch this one. Okay, um, so in, in lecture, right, the prof taught you about three types of loops. Okay. Um, no, that's not the not the logo of a, of a cult. But yeah, they taught you three types of loops. So I think this one, uh, the, so there are three types of loops. First is a must run exactly n times or definite. B is run at any number of times indefinite. And C is run at most n times, definite loop that may break. Okay. So for A and C, means it means that you know the number of n when your loop starts. Because you know the number of n, right, when the loop starts, it is strongly, strongly recommended to use a for loop here. For a and c, right, it is strongly, 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 strongly recommended to use a for loop instead of while loop. There are very special exceptions why you should use a while loop. Right? But generally speaking, what you want to do is you want to use a for loop. Right? So... For example, we have the iteration version of computing the factor of n. So here in this case, we have like n, uh, n five factorial is five times four times three times two times one. Hence, like you will need to, uh, in this case, we know that it must run exactly n times because say we start n with one, right? Then we will need to n times one, n times two, n times three, n times four, n times five. You'll need to multiply it five times, regardless of the n. Another example, uh, now this one is a bit different. Now this one is actually example B, which is run at any number of times. Why? Because if you accept a string, right, uh, you kind of not know what you're getting, you know, it's like, you know, a box of chocolates, you don't know what you're getting. I mean, yeah, sure, you can kind of see it, like, what's the length of the string. But then, if you are the computer, right, you don't know, you just, like, receive uh, strings. You get, it's like receiving mail. You just keep on receiving mail until you stop. So then, what you gotta do is, like, you just keep on checking, is this a character, is this a character until the end, until you don't find a character, then you stop. Then, that is considered indefinite because you don't know uh, how, what's the length of the string and then you also you also don't know you also don't know anything lah. it's very blur it's very blind you're just moving forward you cannot see anything so in this case right you in the type b right what you want to do is you use a while loop because then in a while loop right your ter terminating condition is uh, you you terminate not because you have run exactly n times, but you terminate because of a particular of a condition. In this case, the condition is there's no more characters. Okay, the next example is not so not such a good example, but say we already figure out the length, right? We already figure out the length. Now we want to figure out like check if a string contains any vowel. For example, the word sky does not have any vowels. Now that's the example of C. 
say we already know the length, which is 3. So in this case, right, we know for sure that we're going to run three uh, at least like three iteration for S, K, and Y. But then the difference with A is that your loop can terminate anytime it finds a vowel. So if it finds a vowel in between, right, then just stop. No need to complete the entire loop and just return true. That's the example for C. Are we clear here? If it's clear, can you just like thumbs up? When to use a for loop and when to use a while loop. Okay, so I think one Adele is confused. So in this case, right, for example, in this case, um, oh okay, cool, cool. Because if that if that's the case, let's test your knowledge. Um, right. So okay, this is not the answer. Let's, let's clear it. That's not the answer that I'm looking for. So we have this. Uh, so we're gonna try to come up with examples of for each loop. So for for the first example is like, uh, try to find an example for a loop that must run exactly n times. It can be something that happens in real life actually. What is something that you you know like when you start the activity you know for sure that oh I gotta do it like n times. I need to do it like five times before I'm finished. I need to do it ten times before I'm finished. And it's just a repetition. Okay, just oh no. Right, right. Just uh just put it in pull EV. Just put it on pull EV. And if there are some fav uh favorite answers, just like um put a thumbs up to it. I think the run six rounds around the track is a good example, a very good example because like you need to uh, repeat it six times, just like going round and round. What's 5px? Ah? I'm not so sure what that is. Can anyone explain? <laughs> well, there's a lot. What is it? Ah? Oh, it's an exercise. Oh, oh, it's a workout. Oh, okay. Well, then that that's a good example. Yes, it's a repetition taking tutorial. No, failing failing should not be a repetition. Whoever wrote that right, failing should not be an example. Okay, failing should not be an example, should not be something that you repeat, okay? Please. I beg you, please don't. Okay, we have, I think we have good examples and I think uh, workout is one of your favorites as a sample. Good job. Um, now you kind of figure it out. You can use a for loop for all these. Now the next is maybe, the next is the loops that run any number of times. Okay, I know this this one, right? Your answers can get quite dark very fast. So show me how dark you can get. Uh, okay. No, you do not. You do not. You do not fail your exams indefinitely. Whoever wrote touch my tralala, please keep it PG thirteen. Yo, keep it PG thirteen, guys. Guys, stop putting failing exams, guys. Counting the regrets of people giving up on CS Tatani is not indefinite, guys. Counting. Counting the number of sheep in my head to make me sleep. That's a good example. Oh my god. I think like. Some good examples, uh, some good positive normal examples are example breathing, staying alive, um, um, meeting friends, exercising till I hit the ideal weight. Okay, I don't wanna, I'm, I'm not gonna go there, okay? I might be accused for fat shaming. No, I'm not gonna go there. 
Um, but anyways, you guys are doing well, signing extras, yep. You guys are doing well uh, in this exercise, but now you guys get a rough idea. Uh, the things that you do, basically these are the things that you don't know when it will end. You have no idea when it will end and we'll just keep on coming. Good job. Yeah, signing extras. I, I do know that you guys won't see it ending. Last, lastly, the last one before we move on is that the loops that run at most end times. So this one is like, uh, you know, those kinds of repetitions that you know like, oh, okay, the worst comes worst, right? I need to do only like 10 times or 20 times. So like there's a worst case scenario but it won't just go indefinitely. But then you know that if you do well, you can stop earlier. No, retaking CS1010E can go indefinitely, in fact. No, actually not. You, are, you can only stay in NUS for five, five years. So like you can only like repeat 1010E for like 10 times. Failing to complete your 2.4 kilometer run because you're out of breath. Yes, that's a that's actually a pretty good example. That you know that you the word like in this case the best case scenario you complete your 2.4 kilometer, but if you're out of breath, then you stop your run. Password attempts, good job. Never taking <laughs> maybe never taking a CS mod again. Seriously, yeah. Uh, CS is fun, guys. Your relationship, Derek, yes, perhaps. No, I don't think relationships is okay. I don't understand, but in my three, all my three classes, everyone mentioned relationship for this particular example. I don't think there's a limit on the number of relationships you can get, because like in that case, right, it means that you say that oh, I can get only get into relationships like ten times or twenty times before like I stop finding any more relationships. I think in relationships in the indefinite case, once you get engaged with someone, then you stop. Excuse me, while I dying at an early age yeah i kind of gotta agree that's actually a good example eating when you're full you stop yes this one is true like you the definite part is like your the amount of food on your plate but when you're full you break you stop eating i hope the f's in cs 10 e here means the f for respect staying positive guys rt Oh, some, someone just removed their upvote. All right, so well done, everyone. I think you guys got a good, get a good idea of when to use a for loop, when you to use a while loop. As mentioned, yeah, you don't know. Okay. But yeah, please like try your best to use a for loop. When things don't go well, then you start using a while loop. Blah. The only time when you should use a while loop is basically when you have a condition to break and that condition cannot be counted or you know cannot be converted into numbers. Uh. Okay, four votes. Wow. Okay. okay. All right. Um, all right. Um, I'm going for another detour again. Uh, it's going to be a short detour. Allow. What does int input? Okay, uh, we'll just go there uh, at the end of the tutorial because like that's assignment, right? Okay, okay, enough, enough, guys, enough, enough. Uh, I'll just lock it first. Enough. I'll do a very short detour, five minutes. Um, I'm I'm gonna talk about comments, so it's not so important. I know some of you already deal with comments, so if you do, don't wanna hear about it, go for a five minute break. Okay. Go, come back at one one o five. If not, just stay here and hear me blabber about comments. So commenting is a very good exercise um, on encoding because like comments actually helps uh, explain to the readers about how does your code works. Okay, I'm I'm starting an Insta chain trade here. Okay, anyways, um, yeah, comments. There are two ways of giving comments. First is the multiple line comments using triple code. So like here, you can just like multiple lines. Woohoo! And then second one is single line. So uh, after you give a comment here, if you enter, you can, this, this is not a comment. So it's just single line. 
but then with this you can also write the comments right like at the end of your code here so like who this is possible or like def this is possible and usually some of you would do this because this one is actually pretty useful as it actually during exam it will help the graders understand your code better. Guys, keep it PG-13 in the Zoom chat, okay, before I turn it off. Uh, so yeah, um, you can actually leave comments. Uh. What format does assignment to question for once? Uh, yeah, I think a lot of you are confused with the assignments. Let me just show you. Yeah, okay. This is basically what the prof wants me to show you, which is good habit to have comments in your code. Remind yourself what the code is for. Help others understand your code. Remember to make sure you mark out your comments properly. Otherwise, you might get an error when you try to run your program. All right. Um, I think a little anecdote here. Just a little. Last semester, oh no, last year, I had a student taking a practical exam. So, I mean, if you know, right, practical exams have multiple questions, right? Question one, question two, question three. So, whenever he attempted question, the next question, right, he would immediately comment out all the other previous questions. So, like, when he do question two, he'll comment out question one that he has finished. When he's at question three, he will comment out question two and question one. And practical exam two was known to be very, last, year, last year's practical exam two right, was known to be very cruel, right? To get a B, I think you, it was really bad. Uh. It was damn bad. And then this guy, right, he forgot to comment out his code. He forgot to remove the comment part for his code. So all his assigned question one, two, and three, right, are all commented. Hence, basically, he sub submits no code at all. And then, basically, he failed uh, the practical exam, which is very such a shame because his code was working really well. Okay, so, so some of you are talking about Assignment now. Uh, okay, I'll took one minute to talk about assignment. Let me see if I can open cosmology. Six hours are uh, and question four. Okay, given a valid age, um, yeah. So I think uh, write a function check age. Okay. So um, okay. I think we all can agree here, right? Um, please don't. Okay, please don't cop. Please don't admit to plagiarism right in front of my eyes, uh, okay? <laughs> so, what does input do is basically, uh, like, uh, wait, let me just create a new one. What does input do is basically it takes an input uh, from the user, so. Print. Type x input, then this is a prompt. Okay, F5. so it will be giving a prompt. So I'll write it my number 123. But then, but what you need to remember is that uh, input will return the string of your input. So in this case, this one, the class is string. That's why uh, what we, we want to do is, we, after it takes in the input, we want to convert it to integer this way. So when you run it again, it will actually give you an integer. Okay. It took you six hours. Good. Uh, you finally work coding. Uh, okay. Your code can't pass the test case for question four, then I can only help you later. Lah. 
Okay, but as you can see, this one is a while loop because you can detect, don't know like is the user is the user of your code is a dumbass or a huge dumbass. So you don't know how long will the user be able how how many attempts you will make lah. It's a never ending loop. For well, question five, uh, question five, I think most of you right. Uh, the problems that I see from most of your complaints is that question five, you don't read the question properly. Sometimes it's not your coding skills that are in doubt, but your reading skills that are in doubt. So I think my, for question five, right, I suggest to read the questions well. Uh, yes, Mutu. So like try to assign it to integer because you want to use it as integer. Lah. Okay. Question five, right? A lot of your problems is you don't read your questions properly. So read the question properly, then we can talk. If your, prop, if your mistake is because of reading questions, right, I won't help. I'll just say that, read the questions again. Anyways, we'll start tracking. Now go back to my actual lesson. Now, if you can see in the Google, in, you can see in the Google Collab Notebook, right? We actually have a uh, burger question. So we'll talk about that. So this is where the prof actually will really touch on get, get some real coding, okay? So um, for the next few tutorials, right? Aish, okay, later, later, we'll talk about that. Okay, for the next one, uh, for the next few tutorials, we'll be talking about this imaginary fast food chain. So you'll need to be, my suggestion is for the code, whatever code that we do for this assignment, please uh, do it, lah, okay? Yeah, please uh, do it or at least keep track. Because like, if you don't keep the code, it will be kind of hard for you to follow the next one. Okay. So, Stump Fast Food Chain has food customization, meaning you can micromanage what will be or will not be in your burger. Right. So in this case, right, um, this guy ordered, uh, this guy ordered only like, no on, onion, no ketchup, no mustard, no pickles, no regular bun, no beef patty. And yeah, he actually got an actual cheese only. In fact, I did this before. I actually bought only a patty and cheese in McDonald's in FIFO City last year. It was quite funny like, to see the auntie's face very shocked seeing our order. Okay. Then um, in our imaginary restaurant, uh, basically we have, we can customize our burger where the B stands for a piece of bun, C stands for cheese, et cetera, et cetera. So the ingredients are represented by a string. And if you can guess, right, it means that our burgers will be, will be represented by uh, a string of letters, a, a string of characters, okay? So in this case, if we have a Big Mac over here, if we have a Big Mac over here, we can actually write, it has a bun, and then a patty, and then vegetables, and then another bun, patty, cheese, vegetables, bun. I know there are pickles inside, but yeah, I don't like pickles. I hate it. I think that Satan is just trying to mess up with our lives by adding pickles to our burgers. And I never order pickles in McDonald's. I always create a custom order to remove the pickles. Yes, violently American. Just the, just the same way as they add pineapples on freaking pizza. I don't understand it. So, your mission today as our, the programmer to this... Yeah. <laughs> the, Orion, the Oreo meme. Oh, that one is a good job. So, uh, write a function burger price to calculate the price of the burger. So for example, if we have this menu over here, right, we have the price list over here, you need to calculate the price. Ah. So in this case, if I, so, ish. okay, I need to zoom up. So yeah, we have the price and add it up, we get this, okay? Now, here's the fun part. I think this is the part that you all have been waiting for. Discuss it with your neighbor on how to start or do it. Yay! Okay, I'll put you into breakout groups. Let me stop share. And just talk about it. Um, uh, just 
pseudo code. Uh, just discuss with your teammates and just like create a pseudo code. So it means that you don't have to actually come up with the actual uh, answer. You, the actual code, you just need to explain it in English. Like if you do it in English, how would you do it? Now, if you see your poll EV, your poll EV, there's uh, a question already, how to calculate the price of the burger. So once you're done discussing with your friends, um, just go, okay, uh, if you're done, just answer the poll EV and once uh, everyone's back, we'll show the poll EV and discuss together. All right, I think everyone is back. Can you answer the poll EV, everyone? I believe you guys had a blast inside the breakout rooms. Maybe some of you experienced some awkwardness. Maybe some of you are paired with uh, someone who just went MIA. But regardless, I believe you guys already have a rough idea on how you want to do it on how do you want to calculate the price of the burger. Or at least, you know, you get to be miserable together. I'm okay with it. Okay, let's see the poll EV's answers. Okay, we have like find the number of each ingredient and then number of each ingredients multiplied by the price of each ingredient. Match each letter in the burger to their respective costs and add them up. Uh, use a for loop to match the letters in the string and plus one to each letter. At the end, use a sum equals to price times burn number of burn, yada, yada, yada. Using a for loop to iterate over the number of characters. Then use if loop. Uh... Alright, there are some good answers here. So yeah, I think the first method is going to be um, this one where you kind of like just like go through all the ingredients that you have. So like if you have a, like A, B, C, D, E, You'll go through like, okay, A, I'll go through the strings one by one and count. B, I'll count one by one. C, I'll count by one. In a way, that's, that's perfectly fine. That's perfectly fine. Uh, today, what, we're, uh, what the prof has provided is a solution for the, using the loop for iterate. What we're gonna discuss, uh, do is today what uh, is this one, the, using for loop to iterate over the number of characters, then use if loop if the index is blah, 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 blah. Okay, that doesn't make sense, but okay. Okay, now for those of you actually, actually answered, match each letter in the burger to their respective cost and assign each ingredient a price that add together. Like, I think what's important here to think is like, how do you plan to assign or match the letter with the price? I think that's the biggest question here. How do you plan using Python to assign that? All right. Okay, so with that, I'll uh, just start go. So again, like how would you do it in real life, right? Like you will technically receive a string, right? In your function, and then you go through each string character or string one by one, and then you would accumulate the price for that character and output the final price. You know, like going through the self out self checkout counter in fair price. You know, you just like scan the item one by one. So it's the same thing. Like you're scanning the price for each uh, ingredient in the burger, right? And then every time you scan, right, you take the price and then you sum it up. So yeah, you would every time you go through each the character one by one, you would ac start accumulating, right? Hence, you'll need to set the final price to be zero and then you accumulate it to your final price. Mm -hmm. Who's that? Okay, I cannot see the chat. Can I actually use some string? Um, if it's an in, um, okay, there is a problem with using some string. Okay, if you can see, right, uh, there are problems, uh, some string is very limited to if your number is a single digit. Because if it's like, say, uh, okay, say you have some, String. Okay, I'm not so sure why string lah, but say. Uh, okay, I'm not so sure what do you mean by some string, but so there, I think there are some problems. Are like first, what if the numbers are decimals, and second, if the number is more than single digit. Okay, so yeah, you'll need to start with zero. Basically, this is like your cash register where, you know, if it's you in fair price, right? If C like the total price will start with zero. And then whenever you scan, right, then the price will start to add up, okay? 
So it's a good time to start your idea and code together, which we're not gonna happen because it's eight minutes only. But I'll do a demo for you. So what we want to first to achieve is this first. We want to make sure that we can go through each character of the string one by one. Lah. So in this case, yeah, here. I'll define my function first. All right, and then this is my burger. Oops. And then I want to create a for loop. All right for something, say like ingredients in a particular range. Now, I don't know what's the range, right? So I think I need to get like, I need to get the length of the burger. So like, I would say like, um, the size of the burger is the length of the burger. And I'll put here a size. And then basically how to get the each, uh, uh, ingredient as we learned in the previous tutorial uh, we can take in the character of each burger by indexing so we can take it like burger ingredients then we print it Oops, syntax error, my bad. Yep, it's working. Now the thing is, right, as we know, uh, it's it's not important for us to get the price, the items of the burger. Like, it's not enough to get the ingredients alone. Yeah, I think I'll do this. I'll change it to make it clearer. So I think I'll store it in this variable. So what's the ingredient is the burger after indexing. Now we need to check what's the price of the burger, right? So if you can see here, like we have the price list over here. And the easiest way to check the price is basically using an if else statement. So if in the end is uh, goes to B, then uh, basically the price is 0 0.5. Else if ingredient is V, then uh, V is uh, 0 0.7. And if it's uh, L if ingredient is P, it gives us 1.5. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to print them up first. So we know that it's working. Oops, my bad. All right, cool. If you want to make it cooler, maybe like if, if you're not so sure whether like, oh, is the price of the ingredient correct? You can always print the ingredients as well. This is what I would call debugging basically. So if you can see like B is 0 0.5, B is 0 0.7, B is 1.5, B is 0 0.5, that's correct. Now I need to add them up, All right? So I'll just have a variable, my total, which starts at zero, because I haven't bought anything yet. And basically I'll add my total, I'll add the ingredients price to the total. Total equals to total plus 0 0.5. Now another cooler way is that you can actually do total plus equals to 0. Point, I forgot. B is 0 0.7. This also totally works. This one is actually much more elegant as well because by doing this, you know that, oh, this sign shows that it means that I'm gonna add total with 1.5. Uh, it doesn't have to be the plus sign as well. You can also do uh, minus equals to, times equals, uh, divide equals, and floor division equals. Basically anything like that you can imagine. Okay, this one is also possible. And then I'll uh, print, I'll uh, run. All right, why nothing happened? Because we haven't returned it yet. So after everything is done, we'll return the total. 
which is 3.2. Now, if you think that it's correct, you can simply remove the print statement and voila, we're done. And now, uh, let me ask you, um, is there any, as a coder, right, it's not enough that we actually create code that works. I think Derek also mentioned it, right, like in the Telegram group that there is actually a possibility where there is a hidden test case that we don't see. So we kind of need always to see for further. Lah. But not only that, we always keep on thinking like, how can we improve our code, make it better, make it easier to read. Now, because of that, I'm now asking you guys, uh, just drop it in the chat. Do you have and do you think there's a, oh anyone got the link to the tele group? Uh, okay. Oh, you don't quite understand for the chart and range size. Okay, uh, I'll talk. Okay, so here, right in this case, right, uh, Ray, uh, remember that we can get the ingredients by actually like taking index. So like we can actually do like uh. Zero, which will give me a B. So you can do this, lah. So what we wanna do, right? And answering EHS question is that what we wanna do is that we wanna we wanna get the character uh, of each inside the string one by one. So hence we need to create a for loop where the for loop is from zero to four, three, and then basically go through one by one and take the characters one by one. Like we, we use range. The thing is like, you don't know right the length of the burger. That's why we use uh, the function length here to get the length of the burger. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Nick, for sharing the Telegram link. Okay. So yeah, that's the purpose. Now I think this is not done here. I think uh, we can make it better. For those of uh, does anyone have any idea how to improve this code? Any idea? <coughs> if you have any idea, just shoot it in the Zoom chat. Learn burger means six letters. No, um, here we need to know that the burger is a variable here. It's not a string, it's a variable. So it's a variable that refers to this one. And so basically whatever is inserted in this one will be inserted in this one, which is in this case is the BVBB. Right, we can try that. See, uh, it will return four. Okay, I guess you guys are already brain fried. So I think there's another way that we can uh, improve this code is that um, if you notice right uh, in a for loop, right, it will for uh, it will loop through a sequence. So like for variable, in this case this is the variable name over here, and then this is a sequence. Now if you may notice right, a string is a sequence, right? A string is a sequence. So, because a string is a sequence, we can kind of can immediately insert the string here immediately. As we don't need to do this anymore. So, if I print the ingredient, it should work. Oh, local total power. Oh. Okay, see, so uh, yeah, this iteration, right, will look through the characters in the string one by one and it will print them out. Okay, so this is a new way to actually look through the string of burger. I also see uh, uh, Hai Hong mentioned like write a function for of price list, which is actually very good as well. I think uh, uh, just a little sneak peek later on you'll learn about like abstraction and that's basically what Hai Hong is trying to do so instead of piling it here we're gonna separate it in another function
think uh, I'll just bring it here. Oops, batch. Okay. This is a good way also. Thanks, Hai Hong, for the suggestion. So then, uh, this one, right, you can immediately simplify, like, uh, total, we can bring the total up. Here. Then, basically, uh, you can, like, total price list ingredient. Much more simpler. And then, What's good about this is that if there's any change in the menu, uh, you can simply just change this function over here. That's a very good suggestion. Thanks, Hai Hong. Okay. Uh, so, um, the very final slide that I want to show is this. Uh, where is it? Our learning points of the day. So, coding, right, it's not about how you get the final code. But it's all also important to be able to plan and write your code in English first, which we did in our poll EV, which no, which five of you did in poll EV. So yeah, you may need to write some intermediate code for a semi-finished product to test out your idea. And then after you finally get your code working, you should think about how to improve it. Not for that single shot, but you are also improving your coding skills for your future coding. All right. So I think that's the end of the demo today. For those of you, please uh, make sure that uh, you did, you, okay, I'll just, just make sure that you completed this week's tutorial. You can do it on your own IDLE, you can do it in this Google Collab notebook and just make sure you press copy to drive to save it. And that's the end of today. Make sure you also like whatever you want to do, save it code share. And yeah, that's it. That's the end of today's tutorial. I'm not so sure where the hell you are going, Derek, but yeah. This is the end of <laughs> this is the end of today's tutorial. If there are any questions, and I think everyone has burning questions for assignments, feel free to stay. I'll stop recording now. <laughs>